Good morning, dear students. I'm Dr. Archana Sachdev, Principal Scientist at Indian Agricultural Research Institute of ICAR, New Delhi. Today, I'll be talking about the active site mapping. And in today's lecture, we are going to focus on understanding what the various components of enzyme structure are. And also, we shall look at the type of enzyme structures in a broader detail. This shows the concept map that will be followed in this lecture. We will first study what are the basic types of enzyme structures that is primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. Next, we will look at these structures in detail and at the end we will also briefly look at various types of methods which can be used for enzyme structure analysis. Enzymes are biological catalysts that can increase the rate of reaction without affecting the reaction equilibrium. They work by lowering of the activation energy for a reaction, which leads to an increase in the reaction rate and faster product formation. Enzymatic reactions are also characterized by high substrate and reaction specificity and a few side reactions. They have several applications in areas of research and development, food and feed industry, pharmaceutical industry and other industries like detergent, textile, leather, etc. This slide shows us the various components of the enzyme structure. Enzymes basically have four levels of structures as is shown in figure 1. These levels are primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, quaternary structure. The enzyme structure ranges from a basic amino acid sequence to a three-dimensional structure in a folded protein. The amino acid sequence in polypeptide chains in each enzyme is distinct and determines the three-dimensional shape as well. Further, it is this 3D structure of an enzyme that determines the enzyme's activity. We will look at these structures in details in the sections below. In the next few slides, we will look at each of the enzyme structure in detail and you will see how they behave. The sequence of amino acids in an enzyme is the primary structure as is shown in figure 2. In the primary structure, the constituent amino acids are linked by peptide bonds as shown in figure 3 and the peptide bond is formed between the amino group of one amino acid and the carboxyl group of another along with the release of water molecule. As mentioned above, the primary structure dictates three-dimensional structures of the protein. The different ways in which amino acids will be arranged in a chain will influence proper protein folding of the enzyme to be functionally active. The secondary structure in enzymes refers to the interaction of amino acids in a chain which are closely located. There are two types of secondary structures, helical which are called the alpha helices and pleated sheets which are called the beta pleated sheets. We will look at the structure of alpha helices and beta pleats in details in the slides ahead. The alpha helix is a helical structure coiled around an axis. The helix is right-handed in nature. The alpha helix is characterized by an intramolecular hydrogen bond between O atom of CO group of each peptide bond in the strand and NH group of the peptide bond. The side chain substituents of the amino acids extend to the outside from the helix. The helix has about 3.6 amino acids per turn on an average, meaning that it would have 36 amino acids in 10 turns. The pitch is 5.4 angstroms. Alpha helices form more readily in enzymes than any other possible conformation owing to the optimal use of internal hydrogen bonds made in these arrangements for attaining stability. The second form of secondary structure in enzymes is the beta pleated sheet. This structure is formed by intermolecular hydrogen bonding between two or more straight chains. The O atom of CO peptide bond in one strand 
hydrogen bonds with the NH group of the peptide bond in the adjacent strand. Again, the two strands involved in the formation of beta pleated sheets can run either parallel to each other or anti parallel to each other. If the amino groups of both the chains are on the same side, the sheet is said to be parallel to each other. On the other hand, if the amino acid group of both the chains are on opposite side, the chains are said to run in the opposite direction. In this case, the sheet is termed as anti parallel. The anti parallel beta sheet is more stable than parallel owing to greater alignment in the hydrogen bonds. The difference between the alpha helix and beta pleated sheet is shown very clearly in the table 1. Now we will go on to discuss the tertiary structure of the enzyme and as you already know this is the third level in the tertiary structure of the enzyme after the primary and the secondary. The arrangement of amino acids in three dimensional space defines the tertiary structure of the enzyme. The protein molecules arrange themselves three dimensionally in such a way so as to achieve low energy but at the same time maximum stability. The various interactions involved in the formation or stabilization of the tertiary structure are hydrogen bonds, polar polar interactions, hydrophobic interactions, ionic interactions, formation of disulfide bonds or van der Waal forces. Under physiological conditions, the side chains of amino acids are hydrophobic in nature such as phenylalanine or isoleucine which tend to remain buried within the protein or enzyme core owing to their minimal affinity for the aqueous medium. The alkyl groups of alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine often form hydrophobic interactions between one another. Acidic or basic amino acid side chains are polar in nature and therefore they remain exposed on the enzyme surface to allow for greater water solubility. Sometimes proteins or functional enzymes can be made up of more than one polypeptide chain which are known as subunits. The interaction between these subunits is called the quaternary structure. Various interactions including hydrogen bonding, disulfide bridges and salt bridges are also involved in stabilizing the overall complex. Analysis of enzymes and protein structure can be done with the help of the following advanced analytical techniques and equipments. Determination of amino acids which are present in an enzyme and the molar ratios of each can be analyzed by an amino acid analyzer. The sequence of amino acids in the enzyme can be analyzed by peptide mapping, Edman degradation or mass spectroscopy. The secondary structure of an enzyme can be determined by circular dichroism spectroscopy which is CD. The tertiary structure can be determined by fluorescent spectroscopy. X-ray crystallography or nuclear magnetic resonance analysis can be used to obtain a high resolution analysis of the 3D structure of an enzyme. So in today's lecture on enzyme structure, we have gone through the various levels of the enzyme structure and studied them in details. We shall now summarize the whole thing in the following points. Enzyme structure has four levels, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. The amino acid sequence of the enzyme is called as its primary structure. The interaction of amino acids in a chain is the secondary structure in enzymes. The two types of secondary structures are helical called alpha helices and pleated sheets called beta pleated sheets. The arrangement of amino acids in three dimensional space is the tertiary structure. The quaternary structure however refers to the interaction between the protein subunits. Analysis of the enzyme structure can be done with the help of advanced analytical techniques as well as advanced equipments. Thank you.